At problem number 36 of section 1.6.1, uh, we ask us to recall the equation of uh, a line, equation of the line tangent to the graph of a function f of x, and it's given at the point a, and that's given by the equation f of a plus uh, f prime of a times x minus a. Now, this is a good approximation for, um, for the function f right around the point a. We can see that by showing that, well, uh, first of all, p1 of a is actually equal to f of a. We can see that by just plugging in into the equation of the, the tangent line. And we get p1 of a is equal to f of a plus f prime of a times, well now we're sticking in a for x, a minus a, which is just zero. So this whole thing is just f of a. We see that p1 of a is actually equal to f of a. And not only do the uh, two equations agree at that point, the derivatives also agree. We can see that by computing the derivative of p1 of x. So f of a is just a constant. It goes to 0. And we're left with um, f of a, or f prime of a times x, which whose derivative is f prime of a and f prime of a times a, which is a constant, so it goes to zero. So we see that um, the, derivative, uh, the, the derivative of the tangent line is the same as the derivative of the function, and they actually agree at that point. Now, this is a pretty good approximation, but it turns out we can actually do a little bit better. So if we define p2 to be something similar, by taking essentially the equation that we already had and then adding on this extra term one half times the second derivative of f evaluated at a times the quantity x minus a squared. We can see that not only do we get the functions to agree, the derivative, first derivative, derivative to agree, but we also get the third derivative to agree. Well, to see that, let's first check and see, make sure that the functions themselves agree. So p2 of a will be equal to f of a plus f prime of a. Now it's b times a minus a, or just 0, plus f double prime of a times a minus a squared. Well, these last two terms just go to zero, so all we're left with is f of a, and we see that they do indeed agree. Next, we compute the first derivative of p of p two evaluated at a. So we see. Let's actually just do the derivative in general, and then we'll substitute in a. So the first term is just a constant; it goes to zero. Uh, the second term, if we multiply through, we'll have f prime of a times x, which when we take the derivative, we'll just end up with f prime of a. And the second part will just be a constant, so that will go to zero. And we're going to add one half times, well, this term here will be equal to one half f double prime of a times x squared minus 2ax plus a squared. So we can pull out the constant 1 half times f double prime evaluated at a. And now we just have to compute the derivative of this term here. So that will be 2x minus 2a. And the derivative of a squared it will just be 0. So now if we evaluate this at the point a, we see we end up with f prime of a plus 1 half f double prime of a uh, times the quantity 2a minus 2a. So the entire last term 
just goes to, goes to zero and we're left with f prime of a. So we see that the first derivative does indeed agree. Now, finally we'll compute the second derivative and show that the second derivative also agrees at this point, at the point a. So the second derivative of p2 evaluated at x well, it's compute the, uh, will be the derivative, uh, the first derivative of the derivative of p, p2. So here we just have a constant, that'll be zero. So that'll leave us with one half f double prime of a times the derivative of this part here, which will just be two minus zero, or just two. Uh, the twos cancel out. So in the end, that leaves us with f double prime of a, and we see that indeed this is a better approximation in the sense that the function, the function and the uh, tangent line, or and the approximation p2 agree at the point a, the first derivative agrees at a, and also the second derivative agrees at a.